Good morning, friends. It's like you saw Larry's hand go up. You all got very quiet very quickly. It is so, so good to be with you. We were able to sneak in that outdoor service right before the rain came. It was so good to be outside and worship under the trees. It smelled so good. We know that we know that we needed the rain, but it was good to be out there. So um, if you have travel plans this summer, but you have time to squeeze in some worship outside with us, I highly suggest that you do that. We have the outdoor service in the summer at 830. And of course, here our, we have our classic service in the sanctuary at 930. We're so glad that you're with us here in person or that you're joining us online. We have a lot of travelers who join us um, online as well, or they watch later on. So that's awesome. We're glad that you're doing that. Um, I have a couple of announcements to share with you. Um, you may have already checked out our graduates through your online worship guide, but we also have the little printed magazine kind of thing that's out on the, um, the welcome tables, but we have a little preview in our mission middle, so you can check that out. And you know, I'm so proud of all of our grads. I'm a little more proud of two of them because they're mine. Um, so check that out. Um, we are so blessed, and so make sure that you reach out. And uh, if you know those grads, you let them know how proud of them you are. Um, and today is this, is, this is a big weekend for us. Um, Camp S'more kicks off. Yay! Um, Miss Kelly, do you have any instructions for us? Anything you need us to know? Show up. Yes. If you are volunteering, we need to be here at what time, Miss Kelly? 3.30 at the latest. At the latest. Pastor Angie, be here at 3.30. Be here at 3.30, y'all, so we can get this show on the road. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a good time. And is the weather going to get any better? Yes. Yes. And y'all pray for Kelly because she's a little tightly wound over this. <laughs> um, so Camp S'more is today and tomorrow. And we're welcoming kids from our church and from the neighborhood. And so it's going to be amazing. And then tomorrow, Freedom School begins. Yay! So this, this place is going to be hopping um, the next few days. But then for the next six weeks, um, there are lots of ways that you can plug in. If we haven't already tapped you and you are interested, make sure you connect with me or any member of the Freedom School Board, and we will hook you up. Um, also, I've shared with a couple of you, and I'm just going to take a moment to, uh, a moment of privilege, kind of, for the Freedom School. Um, one of our interns um, is a biomedical engineer. Is that biomedical engineering student at UC? And one of the classes that she must take opened up, and so we lost her as an intern because she had to take this class. So I need another intern. If you know a college student who needs a great summer job, send them my way. We pay really well, and it's so much fun, and we are a great team. So send them my way. Um, and pray. Um, God's timing is always better than ours. Amen? But I'm sweating it. <laughs> so, um, so please keep that in your prayers. Um, and then we'll have some other prayers that we're going to be lifting up. And then also in the, in the Connect service, we are going to be baptizing Maggie Rose Potts today. So you might want to stay and hang around for that if you are connected to the Pot family. So just wanted to lift that up. There are all kinds of other things for you to check out in your bulletin. Just don't do it during sermon. All right, friends, let's take a deep breath. Get ourselves ready for worship by soaking in that prelude that Mary and Jordan has prepared to center us for worship this morning.
please stand for our call to worship as it's printed in our bulletin and in your online worship guide. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Creator God, we come together this morning to worship you, knowing that words are not enough to show the depth of our gratitude or the expanse of our love. We do know that your grace and love are even greater. We do know that you are with us in this place, and we are so grateful. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we worship this day. Amen and amen. And let us sing together our morning song, Come Thou Fount, Fount of Every Blessing, number 400 in your United Methodist hymnal, number 400. may be seated. I love that song. Thank you, Mary Ann. That was beautiful. Friends, we have a lot on our prayer plates, and I have a few extra things to add. So let's, let's still our hearts. If you are someone who has to have something going on with your hands, now's a good time to get out those, those prayer shawls, those prayer beads, those little prayer squares. Maybe hold the hand of the person next to you if they'll allow it. Um, there we go. Molly knows what's up. And uh, let's still ourselves and take it to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, it's, it's us again. Your children are gathered from all kinds of places, all kinds of states in our heart. Some of us are gathered in this place, and some of us are in other states and other places. Some of us are in our cars, some of us are at work, some of us are, are waiting for our games. But wherever it is, Lord, we know that we are in your know that we are connected to 
one another and to you. And God, we thank you for that connection. We thank you that you are only a breath away. We thank you that you hear us. You hear the deep, deep cries of our hearts. And you hear those light sighs when we can't quite put the words together. And we know what it is that we need. So, Lord, we come this time and we lift our hearts up to you. You know. You know us. You know those things that are weighing us down, those things that are distracting us. We give it all to you. We pray for healing for ourselves, for our loved ones, for those in our church family, and for those who desperately need it in so many ways. We lift up the woolies. Lord, you know what it is that they need. We lift up our travelers as they come and they go. Lord, we pray that you would bring them back safely to us. We lift up our graduates, Lord. We ask your blessings to flow over them as they begin new paths, as they figure out what next steps might be. Lord, guide their steps and keep them on your path. Lord, we lift up our camps more and all of our kiddos and our volunteers. Lord, we pray that we could be a place of hospitality for the kids and for their parents and their caregivers. We lift up our Freedom School, our teachers, and all of our scholars and their families. Lord, we pray that this will be a place of learning for them as well as for us. And Lord, we lift, up, we lift up our churches. We thank you for the ways that we are connected. And we know, Lord, that this is typically a season of transition. So we lift up our sister churches who might be receiving a new pastor or those who are waiting. We lift up those pastors who are in the midst of a transition as well. And we are mindful, Lord, that we all are in some kind of transition. Maybe we're going into or coming out of, or maybe we're just sitting in the midst of some things. So, Lord, we need you. Oh, Lord, how we need you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for never leaving us alone. Even when we ask for it, even when we demand it and sulk about it. Thank you, Lord, for never, ever leaving us alone. Lord, we lift up all of these things, and we lift up our silent prayers as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And together, we lift our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
and get excited to do it. Look at your cute little dog. Hello? Oh, there I am. Look what you got. No, no, can I see this? This goes back now. I'm not going to keep it. What is this? Yeah. We'll talk, let's talk about it downstairs. How about that? I got distracted. It's just a cute little bag. It's the perfect little change purse. Oh, yeah. Oh, also the mom's lipstick. <laughs> there it is. I heard about that. <laughs> All right. I brought something, too. I brought this. Do you know what this is? A map. A map. What do we use maps for? You don't know why we use maps? Huh? Well, we, who, do you know somebody who uses maps? God uses maps. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. I think he's probably the ultimate map maker. Um, do, have you ever seen your mom or dad use a map? Your mama? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Does your dad think he just knows how to get there? <laughs> no? That just happens Sorry. at my house? Yeah, so, so we do have a map here, and can you see all the roads on there? What color are some of the roads? Yellow, Yellow blue, gray, yeah. Are they all straight? Yeah, there are some white ones. Those are the even the smaller ones. No, they're not all straight. So this happens to be a, m there's a light blue. I actually think that's part of a river or like a stream. You don't? Okay. Well, we can agree to disagree. Um, so, so this happens to be a map to get from my office to my house. Okay? When I typed in from 3682 West Fork Road to 7732 Shadow Leaf, this is what they gave me. This is what Google Maps provided for me. Okay. Well, let me see. That's Longhorn Steakhouse. <laughs> that, is unfortunately, is not on my ride home. Yeah. That is um, Valley Escondido Mexican restaurant. Have you ever been there? Best guac ever. Um, okay, so back to the, let's focus in on this blue. Do you see the blue? It also gives me timing, okay? Yeah, do you see what number that is? Nine. So they provided the fastest route for me um, was nine minutes long from my office. Here I am in my office, and there's my house, okay? So it also happens to be the straightest, right? Like if I have these gray ones, those are other options as well. They gave me a couple, three options to choose from, which is not good for Kelly because Kelly has a hard time making decisions. Um, and so, so I have all these options. But do you know what? I think if I ended up on this yellow road, I would also eventually be able to get home. And I know this because my phone says redirecting, redirecting, <laughs> redirecting, right? Um, um, that's just, that's Google's advertisement. Oh, Bob Evans. That's Bob Evans. That's right near us. That's the Bob Evans right up the road. So you do or don't? You do? That's good. Yeah. You love Bob Evans? That's what Annabelle used to call it, Bob Evans. I called it Bob Evans. Yeah, Bob Evans. She would go, I don't want to go to Bob Evans. It takes too long. Anywho, now we're, now we're way off track here. So, so this is the fastest route, right? And I'm going to trust this map because... Well, first of all, they're pretty reliable these days, but um, sometimes, Miss Kelly, if I did it all on my own, I would end up on this yellow road over here, and it's going to take me way longer if I take 275 all the way around to Coleraine Avenue and then get off and get to my house. So, so I'm going to take West Fork. Oh, that's very clever. Um, but you know what? It's like this with life, too, right? And you kind of had it right. God does use maps. He knows all Goodness bless you. You all right? He knows all of the paths, all of the routes that are possible. Yeah, Dada, you're going to have to bring it to us. Right? He knows all of them. And in the book of Proverbs, we're reminded, we are taught that we need to trust him and lean not on our own understanding where we think we belong. In, uh -oh, in life, Sometimes we're going to get on the wrong path, right? Or God might put us on a longer path, not the fastest one. Because he knows on the fastest one, there's something that's going to get in our way. 
He might even put us on a path of something that's going to get in our way on purpose. Why? Because he knows that that's where we need to be at that moment. It might be something really hard in someone else's life, but you need to be there for it. So he's putting you on that path. To make it right. right. Yeah. So just like Google Maps or Apple Maps, and we trust in those, well, some of us, right? Trust in these maps. Molly. Oh, can you hand me that, please? That's not a garbage can. So just like we trust maps on our phones or in books or on our computer, in life we have to trust God for the right path. Yeah. yeah. Not ourselves. God. Exactly. The ultimate map maker. <laughs> All right. Let's say a prayer and we'll go downstairs. Wait, do you will we? Okay. We can start with amen. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this place and for this church family. Thank you for directing our paths. Help us trust that you are putting us on the one where we belong, whether it's the shortest, the fastest, the one with the obstacle or without. We love you, God. Thank you so much for loving us. And everyone said, amen. We are so grateful for all of the good gifts that God gives us, whether it's our littles or the people who teach them, it's our friends who are joining us in worship and helping to make worship happen, gifts that we send in and bring in, they're all around us, and it is so good when we are paying attention and being mindful of them. So we have the gift of music as we meditate, as we pray, as we consider all of the blessings and good gifts in our lives as we give thanks to God, we will listen to Mary Ann's offering. Thank you so much for the gifts that you have woven into us, the gifts of music, the gifts of service, the gifts of hospitality, all of these things that make us who we are. They all come from you. And God, we are so, so grateful. We can't express it, but we do know that it's because you put it in us. We love because you loved us first. We serve because you've shown us how to do it. And you've done all of these things through your son, Jesus Christ. And we give you thanks because of all you've done in our life. God, we love you. We thank you. And we praise your name. And all of God's children say.
You may be seated. Our reading this morning is in Proverbs, and we will be in Proverbs for a few more weeks, and I'm sharing from Proverbs chapter 3, and it, it's, it's no coincidence, because there really aren't any coincidences, if you think about it, um, that we are hanging out today in Proverbs chapter 3 on, on graduation Sunday. Um, This is an admonition to trust and honor God. So hear these words uh, from chapter 3 in the book of Proverbs. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you, Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My child, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves the one he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts everywhere be acceptable in your sight. O holy God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the message translation, in the the message version of it, the the headline says, instead of, so in the the headline in my Bible, in my New Revised Standard Version says, it's an admonition to trust and honor God. I love that. Trust and honor God. That sounds, that even sounds admirable, doesn't it? In the message translation, it says, don't assume you know it all. Which one, which one feels more like what you need to hear right now in your time in life? We want to, we want to say it's the more admirable one, but it might be the one around assuming. How many of you have ever heard that, that saying about assuming? Go ahead and raise your hand. All right, so when I was a freshman in high school, My choir director, she was also the show choir director, she said, you should never assume. And then she spelled it out on the board, because we still had chalkboards then. And then she said, because it might make, and then she underlined the first three letters of you and then me. I never forgot how to spell assume after that. But I had never heard that before. And so here we are, don't assume you know it all. And it feels like I could give a graduation sermon, doesn't it? That's what we we need to know. Remember, as I look at you all, do you remember the graduation sermon that you were given, the graduation speech that whoever gave at your graduations? Do you remember it? Do you remember who it was? 
some of you are like, yes, and some of you are like, no, nope, 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 nope. Here's what I remember. I mean, and it was, I'm going to say it out loud again for the second time today. It was 30 years ago this June that I graduated from high school. Give me a minute. Y'all, I'm in all the feels. I've never felt old before, and I kind of am feeling it this weekend. 30 years ago, I I can say something happened 30 years ago. I don't remember who our speaker was, um, but I do remember that it was right after that very controversial decision where you weren't allowed to pray at the school assemblies anymore. And you weren't allowed to pray at the graduation ceremonies anymore. That's what I remember about our graduation. And I remember the, val- the, the salutatorian was my pastor's daughter. That's what I remember. And this is the beginning of the resistance in me. She, well, it probably wasn't the beginning. She said, we're going to pray. We're going to do this. And, and some of us are like, Mm-mm, no, we're not. We don't want to get in trouble. They just haven't given us our diplomas yet. And some of us are like, we're doing this. We're doing this. And then there were some of us who were like, we can pray anywhere. They, they can't tell us to stop praying. We, we, we can sit here and pray. We can pray the whole time. And, and so we had all of these different camps talking about how we were going to pray. That's what I remember of our graduation speeches. Don't assume you know it all. Man, we were 18, and we were assuming we knew it all. Because when you're 18, you think you do know it all. There's a difference between wisdom and knowledge. Can I get an amen? And some of us who are more seasoned, I mean, Kelly's not in here. She, she's not as seasoned as we are, right? There, there's, there's something that comes, this knowledge that comes, this wisdom that comes when you're more seasoned. We know not to assume that we know it all. We begin to trust in the Lord more as we become more seasoned in our faith. When you hear the message version, it says, Good friend, don't forget all I've taught you. Take to heart my commands. They'll help you live a long time, a life, a long life lived full and well. And what I appreciate is in both, both versions of this, we have the, the negative, don't do this, but do do this. How many of you respond well when someone tells you not to do something? Come on now. How many of you, how many of you do the exact opposite as soon as someone tells you not to do something? Yes, sir. I, that hand went straight up in the air. <laughs> now, some of you, your parents caught on really quick, and they learned to reframe that. And so instead of saying, don't do this, they would say, now, we're going to be doing this, so let's do this. So instead of saying, don't go and get muddy, they would say, now, remember, we're going to be heading to Grandma's for Sunday dinner. Let's, let's, let's stay tidy. So we would say something like that. Or in our house, I would say, remember, we're going to be going to Grandy's, so we don't want to fill up because she's going she's gonna to beat us or something like that. We would, say, we, would, we would always reframe that and give them a good reason, right? That's what, that's what the writer's doing in this, in this wisdom writing that we have today. Instead of saying, um, don't forget, they're saying, take to heart my commandments. And this is a really good graduation speech that we have right here in Proverbs 3. Take to heart my commandments because they'll help you live a long, long time, a long life lived full and well. Keep your grip on love and loyalty. Tie them around your neck. Carve them on the tablet of your heart. Earn a reputation for living well in God's eyes. I love that one. And then trust God from the bottom of your heart. 
that didn't have a negative in there. Well, not in the beginning. And then the end, it says, don't try to figure out everything on your own. How's that go for you when you try to figure it out all on your own? Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Run from evil. There is some good advice. Honor God with everything you Give him the first and the best. What we see in our culture now is that God often gets our leftovers. And you can pretty much look in every aspect of your life, and that's what God gets. And I think that that's something that we can flip on its head, and we can see how our lives would get flipped around as well when God gets our first and our best. But that's a whole other sermon. So if we remember everything that God has taught us and we take to heart those commands, that's the beginning of flipping it all around. There's a little plaque that uh, I've seen around. I've seen it in I've seen it in memes, I've seen it in cards. I've even seen it tattooed on people's bodies. Um, it's a little saying, and, it, and it's, it's summed up, and it sounds like it might be scriptural. It could be a Helen Steiner Rice poem for all I know. But it says, always remember <clears throat> that you are braver than you think, stronger than you seem, and loved more than you know. I don't know who wrote it. It's, it almost sounds kind of kitschy, doesn't it? But at the same time, it's, it's true. You have this bravery, this courageousness that is in you that God has knit into you because you are a child of God. You are the son or the daughter of the king. You have that bravery in you. And that strength, oh, that strength that you have in you, it, it gets you, you, you can go so much further than you ever thought you could, can't you? Think about the cancer that you beat, that loneliness that you've endured, the heartache that you've kept at bay. You felt it, but you haven't let it overwhelm you because you're remembering the strength that you have in Christ Jesus. And loved more than you know. I don't think that we can ever comprehend the depth, the height, the width of the love he has for us. We think we've got a handle on it, but I don't think we do. Um, I had the honor of preaching um, a memorial service yesterday for a beloved woman from my hometown. She was a teacher for 37 years, an elementary school teacher, so she probably taught almost every one of my friends. She was amazing. She was amazing. Mrs. Mitchell, everyone loved her. And her son was one of my best friends in elementary school. And then I moved away then I, when we all got back together in high school, I mean, that friendship struck right up. And we were rotten kids. I keep telling you we were rotten kids. We were rotten kids. Well, we thought we were rotten. I mean, looking back, we probably really weren't that bad. But, man, she loved us. She had to have loved us because we were rotten. And I just think of that kind of love that she poured into us and poured over us. And that's the kind of love that God pours into us pours over us. And it's limitless, friends. There's nothing that you can do that makes that love run out. And I think we forget that sometimes. Braver than you think, stronger than you seem, loved more than you know. So when you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling weak, when you're feeling unlovable, remember that you are a child of God. Remember all that he's taught you. Remember that strength that is in you. 
Because when you trust God, when you're following that map that he's made for you, he's got you. You can be courageous. You can be brave. And when you're not feeling so lovable, remember the one who said, I love you to the end of the age. I'm with you to the end of the age. And even then, I'm going to welcome you home. I'll be with you. And so, friends, we have all of that in this little bitty piece of scripture today. When you dig in, when you mine it, when you write it on your heart, on the tablet of your heart, it's right there. There's wisdom in that. And we can trust it. We can trust in that. Let's pray. Lord God, we we do not want to forget. We do not want to forget your teaching. We want to write it on our hearts. Sometimes we get distracted. Not just by shiny things. Sometimes we get a little stressed out. Overwhelmed. It's the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we assume. Sometimes we forget to run to you. We just stand still in the midst of everything surrounding us. So thank you. Thank you for for holding us, for swooping in, for reminding us, for whatever it is that you are doing right now for us, in us, through us. We are so grateful. God, you are amazing. Help us to remember that wonderful, amazing awesomeness that is you. And help us to remember those very same traits you have woven into us. God, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise your holy name. Amen. Let's stand and sing together our final hymn of the morning, Trust and Obey. It's number 467 in your United Methodist hymnal, number 467.
forth, friends, from this place and to the places that you will go. Go forth knowing how very loved you are, knowing that you have been given the map. You know where to go. You need to follow that call that he has laid on your heart. Go forth into the world, sharing that love, sharing that grace, sharing that mercy, trusting, obeying. Go forth in peace. In the name of the one who made you, the one who saved you, and the one who sustained you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. You may be seated.